I also would like to thank you for, because I know coming here on a busy day is, um, and I know you come here out of your busy schedule, so we also have great gift bags for all the hiring day attendees that uh, you can pick up before you leave. Hello everyone, thank you for coming. My name is Emily Sanford, this is Chandra Galbiati, Becky Liedel, and Austin Shoecraft, and together we built Spellbook. Spellbook is an interactive storybook that teaches children basic programming logic. As you're likely aware, there's a large gender gap in the tech industry, so we were inspired to build something that would be engaging to girls targeting ages six to 10. When building Spellbook, we were influenced by existing visual programming languages such as Scratch, but we wanted to add a story component. We like to call it story-driven development. What you see here is a typical game page. Up top, we have our story text. In this case, our challenge is to help Moopsie Monkey. And down below, we have our spell tools that allow the user to actually interact with the game. These commands and variables can be dragged and combined to visually build the program or spell that will be executed to solve each puzzle. We used Angular directives that can be embedded within each other to allow for the nesting of commands, and you can nest almost indefinitely if you wish. Even still, we do have a defined set of rules about where each element can be placed in order to ensure that the program is in fact executable. And now I'm going to hand it off to Chandra, who's going to tell you more about our game logic. Thanks, Emily. On top of a simple open source game engine, we built a real-time interpreter that takes our spell and executes the commands on the game board. You can see this user is using some dry programming methodology to pick up all the bananas in a loop. And they won. The game engine that we wrote is, functions as a finite state machine. Each method in the spell will trigger a transition on the game board into a new state. We thought it was important to allow children to play with um, conditional statements. And this actually proved to be fairly complicated because the, the conditional statement will trigger a different transition depending on the current state of the game. For example, in this case, if there are still bananas on the board, it's going to continue to move up, or move, yeah, move up and pick up a banana. Whereas if there aren't, it has to move on and trigger the next transition method in the spell. However, each of the conditionals is looking for something else on the game state whether or not the user is holding a banana, whether or not the monkey on that particular square has the name Mopsy. And it was important that the conditionals be dynamic and modular. And Becky Lee is going to tell you more about why that was important. Thanks, Chandra. So users also have the ability to create their own stories and levels. Uh, they can add different, decide which tools are going to be available on each level, add different items to their game board, as well as set the win and lose requirements. Now, we only allow certain things to be set as requirements. For example, how many moves you can use, and we only allow actions such as pick up, give, tell, and ask to be set so that we can encourage creative solutions from children. Once a user is finished building their board, all of the win and lose requirements are parsed and sent to our requirements dictionary to make sure that it's always saved in the right format. Now, Austin's going to tell you guys a little bit about our user data. Now, each one of our users has their own user page that keeps all of their account information. We have their basic account information shown, as well as a carousel full of playable characters that they can choose and select from. Once selected and saved, these will be dynamically added to each game board that they play. While a user is going through a page, we're keeping track of how well they're doing and how many tries it takes them to get to the solution. We visualize this data using D3 shown on the side to say how well they understand each concept. In the future, we're going to be adding more metrics to decide how far away they are from an optimal path, for example, to better understand our users. And then we have our admin page, which has a uh, graphical user interface showing the distribution of our users by age and by gender and how well they did for each one of these concepts. Later on, we'll be adding additional ways for teachers to see how well certain students are doing or how well different groups are doing for each one of these concepts or by age or by gender. Now, our app is currently in the hands of some children to get feedback and, uh, so we can improve on this app. We had a lot of fun building Spellbook, and I hope you like it too. Please check us out at myspellbook.org. Thank you.